H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus. One-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. Hi guys, welcome to H2K Infosys. Myself Ankit Reddy. I'm having more than six years of experience in IT industry as well as in teaching field. Here I'll be taking the classes for .NET. .NET will be covering CShop.NET, ASP.NET, and SQL Server database. So in order to complete an application, it is required to have database as well. So here, as part of this course, we'll be covering cshop.net, asp.net, SQL Server. There are other databases also there, but we'll be taking SQL Server database for our course. Here, we can develop with .NET many kind of applications. One is a console application. And then one is a Windows application we call it as. Then other one is a web applications. And fourth one is mobile applications. So these many kinds of applications we can develop by using Visual Studio. And if somebody asks you that, which language are you learning? Please do not go and say that I'm learning .NET. So .NET is a framework. Please remember that. .NET is a framework, not a language. It's a framework under which there are many languages that are supported by Microsoft Visual Studio. Examples are shishop.net, vb.net, jshop.net, like many other languages are there under which the languages which are got famous is shishop.net and the next famous is vb.net so according to your choice you can choose the one which you wanted to learn and in the market more requirement is there for shishop.net organizers are expecting that a candidate should have a experience in a shishop.net along with ASP.NET. The combinations are like CShop.NET plus ASP.NET and VB.NET plus ASP.NET. So whichever you are taking, ASP.NET will be a common. Why is this ASP.NET common is this ASP.NET for developing a web applications. So whenever you hear the word as ASP.NET, you think that it is for web applications. So whenever you wanted to create a web application, you should learn about ASP.NET. So you think about ASP.NET, that is for web application purpose. And SQL Server is required. Why it is required is, it is a database. Whenever you wanted to frequently use one application, or a website like social networking websites nowadays we are using Facebook, Gmail, Twitter, whatever it is. So today we have registered into that social networking site and tomorrow we wanted to log into the same website. How it is possible? So at the time of registration we will be storing data into our database and whenever he comes back and log into the same application we are checking that is credentials are existing or not. If it is existing, we'll be allowing him to log into that particular website or application so that a database is required. Here, this a console application will be as same as our command prompt. Let me show you that command prompt, how it looks like. This is a CMD is a command to open a command prompt. A console application will look like this. So, 
console application will be used to know about more about cshop.net we'll be learning more in this a console application about the logic what we are going to implement and the basic things very basic things you should start from here the thing is if you start learning directly web application you will not understand the basic things and your base will not be strong so whatever it is whatever the language you are learning the basic things are very very important so we'll be starting with the console application once you understand the console application concepts then it is easy to understand the web application and I'm skipping this Windows applications why the other name for Windows application is a standalone application this means the name is a self-explanatory stand alone it doesn't require anything and as how ashishop.net got famous like compared to vb.net same way web applications are famous uh, compared to windows applications organizer expecting a candidate should be possessed experience with a web application but not a windows application yes i agree with windows application experience guys also required but uh, percentage wise very less maybe out of 100 people required five to six resumes from windows application the remaining 90 percent resumes they need from the web application experience why why is it not got famous and why it is so much famous with the web application what is the advantages web application what are the problems with windows application let us see in a quick so, web application versus windows application here I said that Windows application is a standalone application. A standalone means applications which we will be running like example. Let me tell you that Calci. So it is a calculator. This is a, a calculator which had come along with us operating system that we have got installed into our computers. So this doesn't require anything to run this application means that it is independent from all the things so when you install something into your computer then that will be a standalone application so you don't want to have to connect to anything like it should not be in a network should not be required internet access so this is called a standalone application and remember that your client is asking you to prepare are you to come up with a an application that is a standalone application example I'm showing this one maybe this kind of application your client is asking to develop so today you have developed this and given to him a standalone application or a Windows application will be having dot exe files you would have see this dot exe files whenever you are installing something into your computers you should double click on this dot exe file you will be running this file so after you develop an application accordingly as per the user requirements you will be giving dot exe file suppose it is a calci then you will be distributing to his customers say 1000 customers are there or 2000 customers are there for him a client will be having customers so he has given this dot exe to his 2000 employees after some point of time your client feel that he wanted to add some additional features in it suppose in this place of calculator he wanted to add in his company name or some other features he wanted to add how to do that so your client will come back to you and ask you to do the changes for the existing application yes you analyze that and you feel that okay we can add it to this existing application you agreed for the terms and conditions what will happen after six months of time or one month or one year time you have added the new features for the existing 
application then it will become the calc 1.0 version dot exe had given to the client so what will happen after sending you this requirements you will be creating this new application then you have to hand over this new application to the client then client what will do is again he will take this new exe file and he has to submit to the 2000 employees and what those 2000 employees need to do is they should uninstall this one and then they should install this one just because they need to see the company name here there's a small change so this is a very cumbersome job the maintenance will be very tough and this kind of any additional features added taking to the all the clients is very much a tough job because this is a calculator and it won't take much space in your application in your computer in reality the applications will also be taking much more space into your project I mean in your computers if you don't have space again you need to delete something else to provide required space for this application that's also a problem so the web applications in the case of web applications you no need to provide any exe files to the clients what will happen is after creating a web application we will be keeping that in a server so server will be a physical thing it will be there somewhere else we will be hearing these words server is done for the some point of time so server is not uh, reacting whenever you are trying to access any web applications on your own maybe server is down for this particular time this kind of message will be seen so what is that actually server is a web server we call it as after creating your web application instead of having this exe funda what will happen is will be keeping a web application in a web server keeping a web application in a web server so what will happen why do we keep it in a web server when you keep your application in a web server your clients or your customers whoever it is they can access your application that's called a web application via web browser what is that web browser web browsers are internet explorer google chrome mozilla firefox opera whatever it is the web browsers we are using so to access the web application user required a web browser with internet connection that's it so he no need to install anything and he don't need to provide some space also of comparatively very less space so you required some kbs to open a web browser that's it how big the application is doesn't matter you can access from the website from your web browser and here the enhancements for the current application you no need to give every time this exes what will happen via internet only they can access the new features and if you observe in a banking application sometime they will be giving some messages saying that our application is under maintenance please come back after so and so time otherwise they will be providing some timing before the maintenance taking place from 3-4 days before only they will be giving some messages saying that on particular day on particular time our application will be down these and these services will not be available the other services will be available like that and you will be wondering that some social networking websites like Facebook or Twitter whatever it is they are also coming up with everyday new new features but have you ever seen that a message is saying like this in a social networking websites definitely no how it is happening again I said that we'll be keeping a web application in a web server a web server is there and for a time being or 
to have a backup to make application as a robustness what they will do is instead of depending on a one server they will buy that another web server so in these two places your applications will be there what will happen is users can be access the first from the web server one and they will be making changes in a web server two so as long as you are changing or you are adding some enhancements to the web application the current web application that will be taking part in a web server 2 so users will be connecting to the web server 1 they will be accessing that application without any interruption once they feel that all the applications enhancements is done they will be testing that after they feel that everything is working fine then they will connect you to the web server 2 that time immediately they can see that new features once they log off and log in they can see that new features so that way the maintenance is a very very a comfort and user friendly for customers with this web application so only nowadays whoever develop an application they want it to be on the go nowadays it is like not only web application they wanted a mobile application they wanted to hold in a hand and they wanted to take it wherever they want to go so standalone application means you will be installing it on a computer and you cannot get this online updates because it doesn't require to connect to the internet but with web application it will be connecting with the online updates so there are more advantages with web application projects compared to the windows applications still there are requirements are there with windows applications as well but comparatively very low with this web application so people will be preferring to learn and organizations also preferring to recruit the persons who is having web application experience so that's why we'll be covering most of the times with web application and console application and let me take one a practical example instead of telling this everything theoretical i'm having visual studio 2012 that's ultimate version let me open a, a project how to open it after clicking on it you can just click here and choose a new click on project Let it load. It will take a few seconds. Let it load. Yes, see here, the console application is there. Now, let me check this sample program. So, this is our a project name click on ok it will be creating let it create see this once you have created your application the 15 lines of code has come automatically you have not yet written anything now what I am going to do is I am going to write a program the program is we are going to check that dividing a number so we require a numerator and denominator the conditions are like if you ask a user to enter a number suppose please enter a number if I ask he may press 5 or 10 or there are chances that so, Uh, somebody ping me we need to familiarize java or oh, is this a question or a statement uh, sarita it, no it doesn't require to have any knowledge before joining this dotnet i'll make you people that in a suppose 
a non it background guy also can prepare or can create an application or a project on his own at the end of the course today if you don't know anything what i need from you is you should understand english language and you should follow my instructions and you should do the assignments what i'm giving and i'm there always to help you if you are getting anything trouble from the technical thing i'm always there to help you via the technical things so if you attend my all sessions without fail and if you follow that sessions and if you do the assignments simple simple assignments that i'm going to give definitely you'll be in a position at the end of the course you can create your own project that's my promise from my end okay and suppose if you enter a number by mistake like this and this is not a number so the first condition is if he type anything other than number we need to tell him that the program should let the user know only numbers can be added and one more thing is if user enters a very large number at that time also will be telling that large numbers are not allowed then we'll be giving some range so first condition is if the user enters some alphabetic number suppose if i ask you to enter a number you may press 10 like 10 so the, that time the program should let the user only numbers are allowed So if the user enters 10, instead of 10, actually the number I'm telling, instead of number 10, if you type like this, 10, then the program should let the user know, the program should let the user know only numbers are allowed. This is the first condition. And then one more condition, if the user enters very large number, if the user enters very large number that time also the program should let the user know about the range allowed the program should let the user know only the range is allowed and when you are doing that division the denominator should not be zero should not be zero that is this one you know I guess if you have a denominator is a zero what will happen suppose let me show you 10 divided by zero see cannot divided by zero so if any of these things happen we wanted to show this kind of messages if user enters 10 digits like this uh, alpha characters we need to show these are not allowed if he enters a very large number again we need to show this large numbers are not allowed and we'll be giving some range within that range only you need to enter and denominator should not be zero like that also we can take this so let me take this an example with this visual studio so this is of a console application with this we can have this program by using cshop.net see you can see dot cs this stands for c sharp if you have selected visual basic here you can see dot vb at the time of installation only it will be asking you whether you need c sharp or vb.net there will be a check boxes if you choose c sharp then your program or projects will be under c sharp if you choose vb at the time of installation you can be seeing the programs in a vb only now 
in a console application hi you are told that will be asking please enter a number so how to write to a console something here we have seen already the command prompt normal command prompt how it look like so as similar to this visual studio also will be looking the same way how to write to console a console class is there and we'll be using a method called write line method do not worry about this class what is that i'm talking a console is a class a program is a class it's a namespace in a regular class we'll be discussing each and everything in a simple simple terms what under this main method is came and what is this void means what is this aux means what is this method right line is what are this why is these lines are required will be covering all the things in our regular classes as of now just concentrate on that how we are achieving these things okay just follow me and just see that how the visual studio is and how the c sharp is and how the console application is okay now we have a class called console and a right line is a method c sharp beautiness is if you just mouse over on it, it will be giving the information. See, I told that console is a class. You can verify it by mouse overing on it. It will be there, the first word itself, a class. System.console. What is that system again? System is a, this one, namespace. If you remove this, suppose, how to remove this? Let me delete it. See, immediately we are getting an error message. So this is the beauty of this Visual Studio. It will be teaching you more. See what is telling. The name console does not exist in the current context. So to avoid that, we can give here only the system. A fully qualified name we can call it as. See, now it is not throwing error. And not only in one place we'll be using this console class. In our program, we'll be using most of the places console class. So instead of typing every time system.console, we can type only at one place then onwards we can use it wherever we want that console class so that is the reason we will be keeping in his in this place system so we have given at on top of this application you no need to give every time you can directly use a console class wherever you want so how to write to console is by using console class write line method Please enter a number for numerator. Okay, he will be typing. Then how to read it? How to read from the console? Then again we have read line. So by this we can read the number okay we can read it but we wanted to store in a some other place for our calculations how to do that as the a person will be entering a number right so we have a data types in our visual studio again do not worry about the data types word data type means it will be holding the data accordingly accordingly in the sense numbers will be stored somewhere else names will be storing in somewhere else so as it is a number, I will be taking integer, integer numerator, that is equals to this one. Again, here it is throwing error. Why is this error is coming? You just mouse over it and you can read that error message at the end. Cannot implicitly convert type string to integer. So this is of type integer and this is of type string. You just mouse over on it and read the first line. It is showing string console.read line. What we are trying to do is, we are trying to convert one type of data to other type of data. That's why it is throwing error. So we need to tell that, please convert into some data type called integer 32. Before assigning, the value will be converting into the integer. Then we can assign it to the another integer. In the same way, we need for other number also. Right? Denominator also will required. Please enter number for denominator. Then 
then again here it is numerator here it is denom oh sorry here it is denominator so we have two numbers one is numerator another one is denominator here it is there now what we can do we wanted to store or we wanted to calculate that numerator by denominator and again that will be a integer integer result is equals to numerator divided by denominator okay now here we wanted to display this to the user whatever user is entering we wanted to display to the user about the result now to write something on a console again we will be using console dot write line here result is like this console dot read key see I'll tell that why why I why I wrote this console dot read key till now I told only two methods under console a right line is to use for to display something on a console so I wrote here how to write to a console and how to read from the console your user has given one number and then how to read it by using console dot read line how to write it is console dot write line method then this is our logic we have created integer result is equal to number divided by I mean numerator divided by denominator and then how to display the result to the end user whatever he has asked he asked the division of this number by this number now how to run this program there are two things for all the programs in visual studio one is compilation other one is this one execution so compilation will be doing like this build build solution this is called compilation then execution is you can click on this uh, start button or else go to debug and you can click this one this can be done from your keyboard also please press function f5 keyboard if i use keyboard you cannot see it so most of the times i'll be utilizing the options which are there on the screen so i'm clicking on start let me give the font size So it is asking please enter a number for numerator suppose I pressed 10 please enter a number for denominator sorry I'm spelling it's 2 now result is 5 fine right application is working fine now what's our concept we need to have these conditions to verify it if user enters 10 what will happen for that let me check it that also suppose by mistake instead of 10 like this see, I pressed this is the one it is showing see this kind of error messages will be irritated to the normal customers they do not understand what is this error about by mistake they would have pressed like this and if you are showing like this message users will get frustrated and they cannot understand the error message also unhandled exception first of all this is technical term what is the exception you don't understand it here it is showing input string was not in a correct format how to handle these kind of exceptions let me show you that how to handle instead of showing this big error messages will be showing some user friendly error messages to do that we always need try catch block helps all the thing we have kept in a try catch catch I have format exception console dot right line what my intention is instead of showing this technical errors to the end users we require to give user friendly error messages so that users can understand what happened went or what went wrong so that you can rectify that error message when next time execution please enter numbers only 
Now let me execute it. What will happen? See, compared to that earlier message and this error message, which one is good? Definitely, this kind of error message showing to end user is always preferable. Instead of showing technical error messages, it was showing unhandled exceptions that time. So this is how a good way of showing error messages to the end users. Now next thing is if user renders very large number, the program should let the user know only the range is allowed. How to do that? First, let me type very large number suppose. The numbers only I am pressing, sorry, only numbers. If I press by mistake like this, see again what we are getting. Unhandled exception, system.overflow exception, value was either too large or too small for integer 32. How to make it understand that users should understand what has went wrong. Sorry, again, we'll close this. Now, we'll have something called overflow exception. So that number should be not less than or not greater than that number, whatever user is entering. Let me take this help, catch, then here it is, overflow exception. Please enter numbers in this range. Otherwise, we'll give some other meaningful error messages like only numbers between this and that are allowed. Only numbers within some range we can mention. Only numbers between are allowed and then which numbers those are here let me mention that int dot min value is there comma int dot max value is there <coughs> so what will happen is if you enter a big number it won't allow you or if you enter less than this number it won't allow you what are these numbers first first let me show you that <coughs> sorry so before printing this and be taking this and then minimum value is Here it is, maximum value is this one. So your value should be within this range, either minimum value and maximum value, okay? Now let us see that whether how it is allowing. The minimum value should be this one and maximum value is this one. Not less than this number and not greater than this number. Suppose if I enter, Let me enter the big number now. See, only numbers between this it is showing. So I cannot enter a very large number, either it is smaller than this number or greater than this number. Now let me show that whether it is really working or not. This is minimum value, right? Suppose if I go with minus 214, 748, 36, instead of 48, I'm giving less number 49 so in minus it is there right 49 so 48 is a bigger value 49 is a smaller value if I press enter it will be showing error message only numbers between this the one is allowed so our program is logically following the conditions whatever client had put user enters a really large number the program should let the user no, only the range is allowed. And suppose if I enter a maximum value more than that specified, what will happen? This is the one. 
2147483648 again it is throwing message so this will be allowing only the numbers between this range now another condition he had put denominator should not be a zero how to achieve that let us take another catch let me take help from this divided by zero exception here we can so if I don't have this first of all what will happen let us see that so before putting this catch I'm trying to do something called 50 then second number is 0 see what's happened unhandled exception so instead of showing this kind of error message to the user will be catching that exception and then will be showing that user friendly error messages instead of showing this kind of error messages close it then let me do this denominator cannot be zero so what my intention is user should enter only the numbers here it is if he enters something else than numbers will be throwing this error message and users are entering numbers only but if they are entering very huge numbers then only I'm showing this error messages and he is enter number only and he entered within a range only but that was zero again that is also not allowed because we cannot do division by zero whatever the number it is suppose 8 is there if we divide by zero it cannot be divided by zero so that exception also we are following now let us see that number is there and if I press zero it is showing that denominator cannot be zero understand we are following all the conditions that the client had put for us and sometimes you cannot expect that maybe you can get other exception also apart from these exceptions console dot right line dot something else we can put at uh, other message like let me take here yes that message so this error message we cannot predict so whatever the error message come at the time of execution it will show that particular message example like when you are dealing with a database and when you are connecting to the database and you are getting the data that time the database server also may be down we cannot predict it so that type of error messages will be covered here and remember that this exception is the final exception that can cover all the exceptions and the remaining exceptions should be there before this exception suppose if you have this exception after this exception it will throw error message immediately see a previous catch clause already catches all exceptions of this are of super type means that this exception will be there under this format exception so let me comment this sorry commented then let me comment this thing also now still this program will work let us see this suppose if I press like this input string was not a correct format still this is not in a user friendly error message what user can understand input string so always think from user perspective he don't aware of this what is the string called is he don't know what is the string so we need to give user friendly error messages so only we have given please enter not here in catch only please enter numbers only so this is also a good error message but compared to this error message like this kind of error message will be always giving 
some more information to the client to enter his valid input. Understand? Like in the same way, if I guess, if I give this one, input was either too large or too small for into 32. Still, you cannot understand it. We are giving a big a clarity of this information. So only we will be using this kind of error messages will be showing to the end users. Hope you understand this. Hope you understand how to catch exceptions and how to deal those exceptions. Instead of showing this technical error message to the end users, please follow that showing a meaningful error messages to the end users. Please let me know if you have any question here with this program. And to conclude, there are many opportunities for this .NET resources, who are having .NET resource, uh, the, the skill set like C Sharp, ASP.NET and this SQL Server. There are plenty of job opportunities you will be getting and for that H2K Invoice will be always helping you to get jobs as well and they will be providing some mock interviews also. Please contact them for this more details. And from my end, I will be helping you for all the technical related questions, whatever you have for the subject. And my promise is that when you join today or when you join any day, you no need to have any knowledge in any of the course. If you have some interest, then that will make you to understand .NET. You should have something like you need to attend classes regularly and you should follow the instructions what I am telling and you should do the assignments what I am going to give simple simple assignments definitely it is not a, a school or a, a college it will be following you every day like have you done or not have you done or not it is like if you have problems you should approach me then I will be helping you it's like not a micro management will be doing whether I have done it or not it is depends on your interest so you will be reaching me if you have any questions via email call this one ready it's you at the rate of gmail.com not only in the class if you feel any hesitation to ask a question in a class you can always reach me via this email and sometimes you may not get a question in the class after having the class you may be getting the question anything which is related to the technical things you can please approach me via this email ID I'll be there always to help you guys If anybody have any questions, please let me know. So with this a demo class is done. If anybody have any questions, please stay back. Otherwise, you can log off for the day. Yeah, one question from the other student. It may be helpful for other students also. The question was, how easy is .NET compared to Java? The thing is, learning is perspective. It is very easy compared to the Java. Java, you need to write all the things. In .NET, you don't need to write so many things. All the things are already there. You just need to use the things. You'll be having toolbox. You need to use the things what are there. Suppose if you wanted to write a, or if you wanted to display a text box, you no need to type anything, a small line of code also. You need to take that just from a toolbox. There are many applications are available. I mean many controls are available. You just drag and drop. That is the biggest advantage with any of the other technologies compared to .NET. Yes, the other question is, what are all the .NET topics are covered if you take this course? 
that's a good question i'll show you that the syllabus that is there in a htk website only here you can go to the courses here you can see microsoft.net come down then you can see these course highlights and deep syllabus is written here topic wise microsoft.net course details this is the syllabus we'll be covering not more than this and not less than this till final project work i guess nobody is there in this class the students you don't need to submit a project in your colleges i guess and then what is the difference between console application and web application a console application will be looking like this we have seen here okay and web application is like we have this one this is a web application one kind of web application example and facebook is a web application yeah and another question is duration of the class and how long that's correct question let me tell you that every day monday to friday i will be taking the same time i think 8 pm to 9:30 pm that is 90 minutes of the class every day and duration is 9 weeks to 10 weeks it's like two and a half months monday to friday i'll be taking 8 pm to 9:30 pm it's a 90 minutes class 9 weeks to 10 weeks will be taking the class it's like two and a half months any other questions Yeah, Chiki, that's another question from other student. Could you explain if .NET is server or client-side programming? These are server-side programming only. A client-side is JavaScript or HTML thing, whatever it is. It is a pure server-side programming. Shishop.net, ASP.net, we are going to discuss. That is a server-side programming, Chiki. Still, we will be taking help from the JavaScript. It is a client-side programming. It is required as well for our anything we are doing validations. Still, that and also will be discussed as part of this syllabus that you can see here in syllabus. We mentioned that also. Introduction to Web Technology, JavaScript is there. Here we'll be discussing about JavaScript as well as part of the course. Any other questions? The entire class or entire course will be discussed in a C sharp programming and ASP.NET. Oh, when is this course going to start? Other question. It's already started. Only one or two classes done. If you can join, then it will be easy for you to pick up the classes. So that one or two classes I will be taking you guys separately. Then we will club into the regular class. Please ask me if you have any other questions. Other question is, do you teach basic programming? Definitely, from basic to advanced this course will be covering 
these are all basic things we'll be covering see here when you look at the syllabus these two chapters will be discussing about theoretical part and from here only we are starting a programming things from why windows forms hello world compiling and exam why do we need a zoom studio all the things are very very basic things i'll be giving examples for each topics then i'll be making you to understand then only i'll be moving to that next topic everybody in the class should understand then only we'll be moving to the next topic thank you sarita any other questions please let me know so that the question which you are asking it will be helpful other student also yeah you are welcome polina yes the next question is how is the dotnet market i know java is open source but dotnet is not exactly the one is correct but these two are very much competitive in the market java and dotnet definitely you will be getting jobs in the market of dotnet more because there are many options are available if you learn java only java will be there in dotnet you can learn c sharp asp dotnet vb dotnet any other like language also you can learn so there is more chances for you to get jobs under dotnet again still there is a big debate will be there java and dotnet in a internet if you verify that some guys will say java is good some guys will say dotnet is good forget about that it's up to us that which one to select and it is depend on our interest as well which one we want to learn there are more jobs available for dotnet thank you yes the other question is does dotnet need to be upgraded periodically in terms of knowledge skills yes i should agree for this correct not only dotnet whatever the technology you are taking whatever the language you are learning every day or every time you need to upgrade yourself being it is a software industry you should be in a position that you should catch the new things which are getting every day otherwise you will be not treated as quick learner or the things which are getting you are not taking into the work resume is any other question yes that is the first level is junior developer that's correct and again in organizations in different different organizations different different positions will be there that name will be different sometimes some organization will call junior developer sometimes will call assistant engineer like that so it is like a fresher kind of jobs will be finding forget about the name they had given it is like entry engineer
how do you get experienced as a senior i didn't get your question how do you get experienced so as yes see if you want to get experience you should work in something else so only you can get it and again it is depending on the performance you are providing in your company and it will be there reviews of your performance depending on that uh, performance reviews will be promoted to senior developer Uh, it is not like a fixed number of years to get senior developer. It depends on again it, uh, in your organization. Sometimes some guys wanted to make you to put in a senior developer position. They can make it you after two years or three years. What is the toughest part where you see students struggle a bit? The toughest part is logical thinking. Say some students will be lacking uh, logical thinking. Those who do not have logical thinking, it's a toughest part. The only thing in this IT industry for a developer is to have logical thinking. Okay. If you have any more questions, please uh, drop an email to here for technical things. It will always be helpful to you. Okay. Welcome. Welcome Chiki. Thank you. Thank you for attending. We will meet again if you are going to join the class. Thank you. Bye.